Hello, athletes and fans of bodybuilding. Tarek Elgindi with the Mr. Olympia. Today, we celebrate Pro 10, 20 years with the Mr. Olympia, and also is now the tanning company for the Arnold Classic Ohio. I have here some of the most iconic figures in bodybuilding, and we'll discuss tanning, presentation, and performance. We'll start with the founder of Pro 10, Stacy Kaufman. How are you, Stacy? Doing great, Tarek. Thanks for having me and the rest of the crew, Cass, Ariel, Rich, and Bob. Good to see you guys. Thanks, it's a wonderful you. South Florida. Thank you so much. I'm also going to introduce, she is the Arnold Classic Champion in the wellness ca category. I call her the Canadian Super Blonde after she won the Toronto Pro, Cassandra Gillis. How are you, Cassandra? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Also with us, the Dragon Slayer. He is the 1984 Light Heavy National Champion. He is the first Arnold Classic Champion, 1988. He is runner-up at the Mr. Olympia, 1986, 1987, and 1988. The legend himself, Rich Gasperi. How are you, Rich? Doing fine. Great to be on the show. Thank you so much. Also with us, she's the two-time Arnold Classic Fitness Champion. She is supposed to attack uh, Whitney Jones and Missy Truscott at the Olympia. She is Ariel Kadar, the sensation. How are you, Ariel? I'm great, Tarek. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Also with us, absolutely, absolutely, Ariel. It's a pleasure. It's my first live with you. We talk so much about you on primetime muscle chris cormier wants you to win the olympia if you <laughs> if you don't win the olympia this time i think he's gonna have a heart attack this year's the year so it's okay so, chris. you'll be okay <laughs> <laughs> sounds good also with us he is the master of ceremony for the mr olympia and arnold classic the athlete's representative he's the 2000 mr usa's bob chicarillo how are you bob Derek, what's up? And uh, let me thank you in advance for having both me and Rich on at the same time. This will put away the rumors that we are, in fact, the same person. <laughs> I always get confused. <laughs> Hold on. Who confuses you guys? Bro, you know how many autographs I've signed as Rich Gasberry over the years? I can't even tell you. <laughs> well, well that's what bodybuilding sport does. I've been called Rich, too, so it's kind of funny. <laughs> it's interesting. Rich, That's Rich is like the, Rich is the Kevin Bacon of bodybuilding. He's uh, <laughs> six degrees of Richie Gasperi. Gotta love it. <laughs> so At least you're a handsome son of a bitch. So thank God thank for that. You. Yeah, thank he's you. Got a new age right now. He's looking ageless. Uh, so there's a, a a rumor among the insiders of bodybuilders. If you're a bodybuilder from uh, 2010 to 2020. And I'm sure Rich will um, second that. If you are a bodybuilder, the brand that you actually take is Gasperi Nutrition. So a lot of guys, they're signed with other companies and they'll take pictures with it, but they actually take Gasperi uh, products. You've heard that before, right, Richie? Yeah, I've, I've heard it a lot. I mean, a lot of the athletes don't like working for me because I make them work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I, I knew guys that were sponsored by other companies, and then I would see them at the gym taking Gasperi Nutrition products. So that's just a, a secret in there for the industry. Let's have Laura Lee Chapados. Hey. How are you? <laughs> Hi. It's okay. How's you're late. Better late Laura than Lee never. Chapados, the two-time Arnold Classic <laughs> Bikini Champion. Thank you for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. Hi, everyone. Very Hello. Good, What's up? Good. We're good. Okay. We're doing good. So let's start with you, Stacy. Talk to us. Uh, Pro 10 was founded in 1987. I had an opportunity to speak with you uh, a few years ago over some good wine in Florida about the history of Pro 10. But I want people to know exactly because you are the most experienced man in ah. tanning. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So ideally, Terex, first of all, thanks for having on, you know, having me on here. And I, I really did want to make this an Arnold tribute, and we're going to go through that path. But the first thing I want to say is thank all the athletes. The reason why Richie's here with our newer athletes is Richie was the first bodybuilder athlete that I used. Richie and I have known each other since he was 20, and I guess I'm 20. You're one year older than me, probably. So 
Rich was invited by me as the first Arnold, but also my first pro 10 athlete. And I wanted to date the history of where we started and where we are today, because like you said, 20 years as the Olympia spot tanning provider and our first year as the Arnold tanning provider. That's kind of interesting to me because I actually part participated at the pro world show in 1986, 87, 88, before it was the Arnold classic. So it's a long history for me and the Arnold that to be there now tanning was bittersweet for me. So I wanted to make that a point because I felt that, you know, we've been around for so long and we're the new pro tan. I say the new pro tan is all about our pro tan chicas and the service we do. My new athletes, the Laura Lee's the Ariel and Cass. We just met Cass. She knows the team of chicas. I'm the guy behind it, but I'm not the guy that's tanning anymore. So just getting me on Tarek was a blessing because I truly believe that the tanning part is the piece of resistance of bodybuilding. If your color's wrong, you ain't winning. Yeah, once in a while you can, but if it's off and you're hiding your food, you're hiding things, your definition's not there. So to be around for so long, I'm humbled by it. And that's why I want to be on here to share the fact that you can be successful in something you believe in as long as you continue to adapt and make the changes to go from our older style, Richie, me, and the old style, Bob, you're in there as well. And now we have our newer athletes. So it's been a great transition to be at this level we are today and to maintain this level since 1987. So it's a long time to be what I would consider the number one brand in a sport and, and the creator. So thank you again. I'm humbled by it. I wanted to showcase our girls. Uh, we invite a few other guys to make it, but I wanted to just showcase you girls because you are the new pro tan and you support us and you love us. And I just wish that the whole bodybuilding community can understand what it's like backstage with team pro tan. And I want everybody to be here, but we have a lot of fun stories. I don't want to take the whole show. Let's talk to some of the beautiful people and then we can move on and, I would keep jumping in, but I love to hear about our, our new girls and their tanning and experiences and the whole idea about why they need to be tan. And Laura Lee, I didn't get to hear your speech at the end. I'm dying to hear it, but I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart and my wife. I heard it was a magnificent that you did about us. You can talk about the story of who we are, um, Tarek, because, you know, pro tan is much better now that I well, have missed pro tan. She's actually over but, there. But, Stacy. Okay, I want to, I want, before we go to them, yeah. I want to go with you. Okay. 1987. How did it start? You're at the beach. You love the beach. You love tanning. How did you have the idea of starting this company? Actually, I started in 1983 with Suntan Oil, a product called Suntan U. I, um, I went, thank you for asking. I went away to college at a football scholarship to South Missouri State. I quit school, came back. Thought I was going to go in the business of spittoons. I chewed tobacco and I thought I had this great idea and I quit college to make a spittoon. It didn't work out for me and I decided to make suntan oil at the time. Didn't know how to do it. Went to work at a factory and as a warehouse worker in a cosmetic factory while I was going to junior college and learned how to print bottles, make batches and made my own suntan oil and pedal up, pedal up and down the beach of South Florida for a few years before I got in the bodybuilding. In 84, I was at a gym and it was a show. I went to a show and I saw them putting baby oil on. Everyone was using baby oil back then. There wasn't any products. Um, although there was a tanning product out there, I came to find 86, but just baby oil. Like, wow, I can make a professional posing oil because God, that oil is so reflective on the stage. The lights with baby oil just popped and made blind spots. It was the wrong oil. It, it reflected the light and didn't absorb. So we invented what was called muscle up PPO, professional posing oil in the beginning. It was one for men and one for women. We had a so-called clear skin for acne back there. Acne was prevalent. We had a bronzer, like a Clinique bronzer, which people were using a little bit of a bronzer, which was called bronzer. And we had a, a sheen called muscle sheen. And that was like the beginning of our branding until a couple years later. And now we'll get to the Arnold story. Um, I found out a product and Richie knew about these products, a product called Dioderm. That was bodybuilders like little hidden secret. And that was a product that had been invented for a skin disorder called vitiligo. Now, I probably don't know what people know what vitiligo is, but Michael Jackson had vitiligo. He was a black man with a lot of white spots. And that's what vitiligo is. It's a very disfiguring, you know, uh, skin thing back, especially back in the early 80s. Now, people with tattoos and piercings, nobody looks at it. But back then, it was disfiguring to people, and they, they used this product. So I was able to meet the person there, and my working at a cosmetic factory, I was able to, you know, make my own formula. And, you know, that's how protein was invented. 87, I just started working with it and came up with a great name. And hustled the bodybuilding scene went to my first show uh it was a national bodybuilding show down here in florida and i actually probably 1984 that was the first show i ever did with john carl meese and then a couple years later i meet richie at his at his front door i'm in there i'm in new jersey and i'm saying i hear this great bodybuilder rich gaspari and i go to new jersey and 
I get the phone book out and I see a bunch of Gaspari's and I find out he works out of the gym and call this gym and he goes, nah, Richie left. Where does he live? And lucky enough, I, uh, I went to his house and uh, I got a knock on the door and this little old lady and man opened the door and I goes, Richie here? And they're like, no, he's not here. They're like, come on in. I said, okay. So I, I went <laughs> in the kid's house. <laughs> I'm sitting in his house with mom and dad and they're feeding me. You hungry? Mind, sure. <laughs> mind you, you know, my mom, my mom and dad are both from Italy and they're just like, you know, 20, you know, 21 years old. This guy it just comes to my house. I was 19. They just invite him in the house. This guy's a stranger <laughs> in my house. I'm coming back from the gym. I come in the gym and this guy's eating dinner at my kitchen table. I'm like, what are my parents? Who's this guy in my house? <laughs> and, and that's how he became my athlete. <laughs> that's how that's how I met Stacy and became his athlete. <laughs> but we became friends for years and we 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 you know he stayed with me in Florida a couple of times. And you know, it's a lifetime of friendships with everybody. But that was the beginning of the pro tan story because back then girls, we didn't have internet, we didn't have these things where you could communicate that way is you got to knock on, go to the phone book. I don't even, I don't think anybody knows what those are anymore. Find an address and then figure out, knock on doors until you find the right Gaspari. And that's what you do. And um, it was a great story. And we became friends ever since. And, and that's what led me into this whole, uh, the whole thing with Arnold. And that's actually why I wanted Richie here because I think the Arnold is a great show. I think it's one of the greatest shows for Olympia qualifier there is. And I personally had a wonderful experience this year at the Arnold. My wife and I, our athletes, I mean, to be straight, we want every class with our athletes, one, two, three across the board, um, except the physique. And that's something that is is just some something that is just enlightening for me and, and it's heartfelt. And my wife and I and our friends and you know, being able to aerial her award on stage and looking at her smile and even given was just like heaven for us. It was it made everything worthwhile. And when I came back to the honor, I was so like emotionally free. Um to be in this sport. I finally have reached the pinnacle of Mr. Pro Tan. You know, we've done it all and we have great people and great team and we have great life and, you know, it's just great. So we want to spread the word with all the shit going on in our country. Bodybuilding is strong and the people in bodybuilding, the sport are strong and they're dedicated and we are part of that dedication and we take it seriously. And I'm proud of that. And that means America strong. And that's what we are. We're an American based company has worked my ass off to sell in a hundred countries around the world. And just want to let the people know you can do it. You could be a winner. Step on stage or a winner just getting on stage. I admire any athlete that gets on stage. First is great, but just getting on stage is an accomplishment. And, you know, to be a part of that since 84 and be over today, it's my adult life. I'll be 59 years old this, this, this year. And I just want to say thanks to the girls and getting them on the power of TV and, you know, talking about them and the whole Arnold thing. And, I'm going to tell you the Arnold story, and this is it, because I keep talking. So interrupt me anytime, Tarek. But I'm going to interrupt you right now, Thank and you. then I'm going to go back to you to the Arnold, because I want uh, the Arnold story is my favorite, and I want, I want everybody to pay attention. But I want you to just, just real quick, Stacey, yes. when yeah, I have an opportunity to sit down with you when we're watching the Nationals in Miami, and you're able to tell me about – when people are using protein and when people are not using protein. You're also able to tell me, Tarek, she's got two coats. She's got one coat. She's yeah. got three coats. She overdid it. You know, so talk to me. What is the ideal tanning or it depends on the skin color or the base that the person has? If you were to recommend something for a first time competitor, what would be the ideal procedure by Stacy Kaufman? Okay, so it's like anything, it's preparation. The same way you practice, the same way you train every day or five times a week, the diet. Tanning is a preparation. So you have to take care of your skin first. You know, the first thing for any athlete, you have to have a tan. And let's establish why do you have to have a tan? It's very simple. When you get on stage and those lights are bright, it's white, the color white reflects. So if you're a very pale person, that light's going to hit you and bounce off. It's going to hide all your definition. That's what a white light does. If you're a black person, the white, the light absorbs. So there's an advantage of being darker versus being lighter because the light absorbs into your skin. So you have to find a medium of your body that allows the light to hit your skin, highlight your definition without bouncing off. And that's what the tan does. The tan actually allows you to do that. Now, the tanning has gotten a little bit out of control, I find, with most athletes. The ideal is to have a natural looking color across the board, meaning that a, a, a bikini athlete, a fitness athlete, a bodybuilder should look like a healthy tan. But 
with the new lights and things being done for you know TV and live streaming, your lights are that much more tense. So you're almost like a makeup for television now. So we actually have to make the pans even darker for the stage for television production, but not necessarily for camera view. So it's a very hard balance for pro tan. But to start, you want to have a you want to establish a base tan, and you want to establish first clear and clean skin. So what does that mean? You take care of your skin. You exfoliate. What's an exfoliator? We happen to make one called Get Buff. People use but any kind of exfoliator, and you do that for a couple of weeks, smooth your skin, get the dead skin off. Every 14 days, your skin regenerates. So that's your first step. Get your skin polished, like you're painting a car, sand it down. Second thing, make sure you're hair free. At least three days before you put your first coat on, you want to be hair free because you want to make sure that coming into the show, you don't have any stubs coming out. You don't have dark holes because some of these people, you know, will, will put a tan right after they shave, which by the way, you will at least want to wait four hours after shaving before putting any pro tan on. One, because it has alcohol and it could sting a little bit too. You want your pores to close. So you would you would prep your skin. That's your first thing. The second thing is you actually kind of want to, well, that's a that's a product that is not necessarily uh, used in the US. It's, a, it's an international product that you have shown on there. Um, the second thing you want to do though, is you want, after you've done exfoliating your skin, is you want to make sure you keep your skin hydrated during contest preparation. You know, your skin's going to deplete, dry out. So you want to make sure you keep it hydrated so you can keep moisturizing your skin on a daily basis. And once you establish that, two weeks out from the show, I tell athletes, get in a tanning bed. If you have access to a tanning bed, start going five minutes. Anybody can go five minutes. Five, six, seven, never more than eight minutes. And then you stop a tanning bed a week before the, the body bone show. Why? Because the sun and that tanning bed, you don't want to have anything that would actually hold any water. So it's good to stop a week before. Three days before the show, you put your base coat on. It's comp colors, base coat 101. You could have put on by a brush, your hand, spray it on, whatever's easiest for you, allow it to sit. The morning, you rinse it off, apply your second coat. You want to build on it to have a natural tan. This way, no matter what other crazy thing Ariel's doing on stage, she's not going to run her streak or whatever. Whenever Laura's walking back and flipping her hair back, she doesn't want to see any marks on the back of her you know, back or her hips where she was holding her hips. Or a cast when she's showing a rear glute, she wants to make sure that the tan is perfect on her legs. So you never want it to run or streak. And by layering it and building upon it, it's more natural looking. And that's your steps. As far as depth of darkness, you asked, it is a preference. But I think sometimes people are too dark. I think you can get to a point where you diminish your quality of your, of your muscle and your definition by being too dark. Um, so I can't give you the answer. That, on that. We were we were talking about that. You think that currently, and you know, as a judge, I'm gonna tell you this. <clears throat> There's two scenarios that are horrific. The first scenario is when somebody is not really tanned, when they're Correct. too light. That is that is where I see most people getting in trouble is usually first-time competitors. Their cousin does their tanning, and I can see the regret on their face when they're backstage and they're looking at other yeah. competitors. Hard. That's why I always tell people, listen, it doesn't matter how young you are in this business, if you've dieted for three months, you got to pay attention to your tanning. And then I, I'm getting to see some pros at the highest level. They're too dark, right? And yes. that almost kind of blurries, that almost blurries the lines because you want the line, the muscle separation to be dark. You yeah. don't want the entire physique to be dark. Cassandra, uh, how many how many coats of tanning do you do you put on prior to your performance? So for a long time, I was only doing one coat and I was never getting dark enough. So we kind of came up with doing a base coat on my own and then getting another base on top of that and then the final coat. And that's worked really well for my skin because I'm so pale. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty and pale. It's okay. You're from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I thought you looked wonderful at the Arnold. I don't, you know, the the presentation was wonderful. Yeah. Let me lose more Brazilian followers and more <laughs> hatred from the Brazilian. No, but, but Cassandra's uh, tan was extremely good. It's not too dark, and for the wellness class, she hit it right. She was really good. Her color is really nice. You want the golden brown. You don't want that dark. Look, we, we're very lucky. When pro tan's dark, it's not muddy. Okay, but we don't like the dark. I don't. But I can only. I'm Mr. Pro Tan. I'm not, you know, signing the checks for all these people. But personally, I think that Rich is smiling. I want you to see Richie's tan at the 89 Arnold, and that you'll see. If you go back to the old days oh. of tan, look at the athletes. Now, lights have changed. I will tell you, lights have changed. You got all these screens behind everybody. So there's some gains here. It's not as easy as it once was. But if you go back to the old school tanning where Richie did it himself with a paintbrush, flex, Bob, we all did. They all, these guys all trained for me, by the way. 
and we have great stories about us in Italy, Richie, with flex and, and uh, flex uh, wheel and all that stuff. But, you know, it, the old days was better than it is today. I'm sorry. It got dark in Europe, and then people thought beating protein was have, darker and darker. And I have a video here that Rich Gasperi with uh, protein at the Arnold. But I have a question for Ariel Kadar. And, Bob, you're on stage. You probably see this better than anybody. When you, Ariel, when you apply protein and then you guys jump like Spider-Man on stage, <laughs> uh, and then I'm assuming, obviously, you grow sweat as well, right? Because you're doing all this movement. Um, wh what is the procedure for a fitness competitor going on stage? You're sweating. The lights are hot. You got tanning on it. You got makeup on it. How do you keep it all together? Honestly, it's almost a little harder in the morning, actually, because we have the tan, the, the routine costume is totally different from the um, the suit. So where the glue sits on most of the suits actually doesn't correlate to where the routine costumes usually are. Or on the other hand, it could cover up some of the spots that me could have messed up from the morning. Um, I personally actually sweat more on stage in the morning. I don't know if it's like nerves or the lights or whatever the case is, but other companies that I used to use, I had was a complete nightmare. And then by the time I was going back to do finals for my routine, I looked like uh, somebody put paint, like someone threw water all over me. It was horrible. But with Pro 10, honestly, I don't know if the product itself sits better. Wow. And um, it, it really doesn't move that much. And the girls backstage, if there are any like small spots, obviously we, we can actually do it ourselves too. We can give us a little puff. You just kind of like mark up. You, it's really easy to fix. But the girls backstage are just excellent. <laughs> They're such perfectionists that they might see a mark more than I do. So that's how well the product honestly stays on my skin. Very nice. Bob, Bob, I'm going to tell you my story afterwards. But I saw a guy at the USA is losing his pro card because of tanning. Okay. And, I, but I remember I, that. Um, maybe it's the same story. But yeah, I, it's probably the same story, yeah. Uh, I, you know, he he actually turned pro as a master, but I'll go in here real quick. This guy spent the whole day at check-ins trying to make to a light heavy at the USA's. This guy was from Utah, and he was the whole day running around the hotel in Las Vegas, 110 degrees, trying to make to light heavy. It was 9 p.m., and he finally made weight 198 and a quarter. OK, we went on stage for prejudging and obviously he looked massive. He probably carved up and he went on to 210 pounds on stage and he was leading prejudging. But his tanning was horrible, horrendous. And I think some of his friends told him, your tanning is not good. We need to fix it up. And he went back to the finals and his tanning was even worse. And at that point, we could not see separation anymore. He went from first with bad tanning and prejudging to third place. Yeah, that's the same and one. He lost, he lost his pro card. So it's, we're talking about the same guy, right? Yeah, <laughs> same. I'll never forget it. I, I, oh, I mean, I've seen, people, I've seen people at local and regional shows with just, you know, bad tan, no tan, using that – that other crappy stuff that, that looks like you painted yourself with gold, like you're on a, like an old James Bond flick, and it's all horrible. But this kid, and listen, for those that are listening, listen to what Tarek's saying, this story. We got the same story. This kid actually lost his pro. He was winning. I had the sheet in my hand. He was winning, and they rejudged the class. It looked literally like he went out in the parking lot they in a rainstorm. He rolled around in the mud, and he came back. And it was so bad that it literally obstructed his physique. You really couldn't make anything out of it. He looked horrible, and he did drop from first. You know, I got the, the hold up from the judges because they wanted to rejudge. But the moral of the story is two things. One, a, a, a bad tan is as bad as just coming out of shape or something like that. It, it can lose you the show. Number two, if you don't think that the judges are judging at nighttime, I am here to assure you, as Tarek is, they are absolutely judging. The results change all the time. Okay, don't think you got it on easy street after the pre-judging. So do your homework and come back. You know, I always reapplied tan before the night show, but you gotta, 
you know, you, you can't just go over the oil and all that. It becomes a big mess. Now, that said, I don't think he was using Protan for the record. I, don't think, I think it was another product. I'll leave the name out. But um, there's a big difference between Protan. Stacy literally changed the game. Back in 87, we go back literally almost 87. But when all the other crap was out, like QT and Sudden Tan and all these other weird things that they had at the time, and the difference between protein was protein was alcohol based. This is alcohol based. I, I thought I was so it sucks into your skin. There's the other stuff looks great when they spray it on, and then if you put oil on it, it was a big smeared mess. You can write your name on your chest, you know that type of stuff. So, yeah, always go with protein. You know, I've always been a big supporter of Stacy. I still have stuff in the market, but thank you. Do your homework, people. Don't come back with a bad tan or no tan. You're gonna lose. We're getting the echo, Bob. So, hey, Tara, do you mind? I mean, I want to ask, I want to reiterate to what Ariel, because what she said was very important. And only if you're in her class when you run into these troubles, like you say, she has different costumes, different suits, and we have, have adhesives for the bikinis to help them so slip and fall. And so you have to touch it up. But what Ariel said is a fact, and what Bob says the same thing. We have a product, our original product is a base coat. We call it a base coat because people now want to be darker. But all you really need is that base coat in layers, and that is with alcohol. And why? Because it basically cuts the oil from your skin. It's a basically it's its own exfoliant. So you don't if you, if you don't have a chance to scrub your skin, we exfoliate for you. It becomes part of your skin, and therefore she can run, jump, and it won't sweat up. Only when you put the top coat. Only when they say, "Oh, you got to get darker." So the top coat is a final thing, but it's only meant to be put on one time. And often, Tarek, you'll hear, "Oh, the, the I don't want to get coaches in trouble, but oh, get them darker, get her darker, get it," you know. And it doesn't work. It's one application, and that's it. The more you put on, the messier it gets. It's just not meant to be built on. And I like to educate because cosmetics is what we're doing here. We're the makeup for bodybuilding, guys. That's that's who we are. Protein is the relevant to bodybuilding, and I'm proud of it. And we have a science because to get on stage and have oil on top of your body, you have to make a product that is water-based because it's, it's basically oil and water don't mix. So by putting an oil over the top, you have to, it seals in. So when you put protein, you take our muscle juice or our show shine or that actually seals in the protein from running and streaking so our products are worked that way and they're designed that way and that's why we're the best because we we, we do this for a living we're always at our factories we're always checking our colors because colors have changed think about it people COVID came factory shut down red is not red anymore rich you can tell you blue is not blue so you have to constantly test your batches trust it out and we do that. And, you know, that's when we developed our deodorant. We sent out samples of our deodorant. I think I might be, Ariel might have been on one of our deodorant. The sample was like, oh, would you mind testing our deodorant for us? You got to try these things. We're working. Now we're proud to say we have a deodorant that you can use backstage. The first and only, I don't have one on my desk. I have more shit on my desk than you can imagine. I'm sorry. But think about it. So we've gone from tanning people now to making sure they smell good. Because why? We're tanning your ass. And you know what? We, we want to smell nice back there. It's a it's a it's a it's a small tent you're in and it's a close quarter with air blowing around. So please buy our deodorant too when you come to tan. It's, it works before, during, and after. It's the only part of its kind. It's patent pending. It's the only deodorant. Send me, send, send me a picture. Send me a picture of your deodorant so I can put you on the tent. Laura Lee Chapados, oh, you won the Arnold Classic uh, twice. Okay, you are one of the favorites to win the Olympia. Um, you don't like Jennifer Dory, and I know you dislike uh, Laura <laughs> B. Chapados, okay? Don't even no. pretend you like those girls. Uh, talk to me about your victory at the Arnold. Obviously, you looked incredible. You're a little bit too conditioned at the Olympia. You went back to the Arnold, and you went back to being a little bit more curvaceous. What happened? Talk to me between the transition of a disappointing fifth place to a win at the Arnold. Okay, so I'm just going to ignore everything that you said prior to that question, okay? <laughs> so we're going to go right into the question. Tarek, thank you for this introduction. I know it's um, like really, you're friends with Jennifer Dory, but you don't get along with Maureen Blanquisco, okay? Okay. <laughs> we'll do UFC. Like, I, I want I want uh, the thing that you did with Chris Bumstead and, and Dino. I'm going to do it. Yeah, uh, and actually, it's going to be between you and Maureen Blanquisco. We're going to do it in Florida. Okay. I'll sponsor that one. <laughs> right, Stacey, you can actually come. I was saying, I'm saying, that one. So talk so, to me about your victory at the Arnold. Yeah, so um, coming back from the Olympia, I obviously went straight to the judges to get my feedback, and the feedback were very clear to me. I was, you know, overly conditioned, 
um, overly lean. So I went back to the drawing board, just going back to honestly having fun, like just training really hard. Um, the thing that people thought is that, you know, getting fuller was easier, but it wasn't, you know, the fact that I was that condition, I obviously lost kind of my muscle mass in the way of doing so. Um, but I just went to like, honestly, Tarek, like having fun, like me and Kim Odo, my coach, that was the motto. I think I had a lot of pressure coming to the Olympia. I put a lot on myself. I, I, I really hard on myself. You know, I really, I do that for not a hobby. It's very important for me. I do a lot, you know, we all do a lot of sacrifices. So we want to go and, and win and be our best. So me being my best is actually being more fuller and more curvaceous. I was very inspired by, you know, improving to get towards where the category is going and where the standard is going. And, um, and yeah, I just, I worked, I think I showed up at like seven pounds heavier, healthier, happier, and, um, I won the show. So, so the feedback for after the Arnold is don't do anything, right? Just do the same thing you did at the Arnold. Is that correct? Pretty, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Cause Bob, we tell them don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> don't do anything and then they do everything you know what i mean we've if seen it over, over and over yeah over many and over again we tell them don't do anything and then they show up at the olympian they're different but congratulations you're one of the greatest bikini champions the only title that you are missing is the olympia look at the camera right now laura lee because we need to create some animosity against the other girls are you mm -hmm. winning the 2023 Mr. Olympia? Without a doubt, you have Miss Bikini Olympia right here, right now. And yeah, you bet. You bet I All will. Right. All right. Sounds good. We'll pass that along to Maureen and Jennifer Dory. Rich, you <laughs> know a lot about animosity and rivalry. You had to battle it out with Lee Haney for many years. Um Talk to us a little bit about this rivalry because you guys actually worked out to, together, right? You guys were training partners and at the same time rivals on stage. How was that? How was the dynamic? Well, I, I moved to California when I was 20 years old and I, I was on a mission to win the nationals. And back then you had to win the nationals and then we'll win the world championships. And while I was training in this gym in the Valley, Reseda, California, Lee Haney saw me training and he asked me, he was already, he came third place in the Olympia. He asked me, can I be his training partner? For me, it was like, holy, you know, moly, I get to train with this professional bodybuilder. So I learned a lot from him, you know, in, in improving my body. I won that nationals and turned, you know, pro. And then from that point, I went into my first pro show, which I said earlier, the night of the champions came second and then was favored to be top in the Olympia, which then I placed third on my first, try at the Olympia, but I never considered Lee Haney. I mean, he was my rival, but for me, I, I truly respected him so much because he taught me so much. I lived in his house before the nationals for uh, like a month and a half. He, he, you know, led me in his house to stay there to, you know, cause I, I couldn't afford, I was like this kid with no money and he, he let me stay there in California. And I was very fortunate with that, that I, that I was able to get my pro card, but this, you know, the second place is three years in a row against Lee Haney. I always told Lee, I said, listen, if you're at, you know, Lee had way better genetics, small waist, wide, you know, wide back. But I always told him, I said, if you're off, I'm going to beat you. That's my goal because I set a new standard in the sport when it came to conditioning. So I go, you're not going to be as conditioned me, but, but if you're off anyway, I'm going to beat you. So he was always pushing, you know, to be at his best against me. So. I never got to beat him, but I I know that I pushed him to be one of the best bodybuilders to have eight Mr. Olympias. But, you know, I still truly feel like he's like my brother. You know what, Richie? Bob will attest to that. You are the creator of this striated glutes, <laughs> right? People it's don't know this, but Rich Gasperi was the first one to present striated glutes on stage. And since then... Every bodybuilder goes on stage and tries to display that he has striated glutes. So you were the pioneer of the striated glutes. Believe it or not, you know, when you look at the classic bodybuilding, you remember trunks used to be a little bit lower. So you really didn't show your glutes. It would happen, you know, CJ, who made trunks back then, 
I knew I had striated glutes and I said, you know what, cut my trunks up higher so you could see, you know, my, you know, my glutes. So I was the first bodybuilder to really cut my trunks and be able to display my glutes on stage. And the first time I did it was before the Arnold Classic, it was the professional Mr. World that was in Columbus, Ohio. I won that show, show with perfect first places and I went against a bodybuilder that you girls are not going to know, Mike Christian, who was one of the favorites, you know, six foot two, really big guy. And I was able to beat him on that conditioning because when I showed my, you know, my butt with the striated glutes, it was like, what the hell is that? Nobody knew what that was back then. So I did set a standard where everyone had to follow from that point to have striated glutes in bodybuilding. Well, you competed with Mike Christian at the 1984 nationals correct he was the heavyweight which, champion which he beat me he beat me yeah. in the in the nationals because i was light heavy he was heavyweight but i also went from 189 as a as a light heavyweight to competing at 215 to 220 so i was a totally different bodybuilder as a pro so from that point he never beat me again you know when i turned pro yeah you gained you gained a lot of weight so you actually had your uh, posing trunk cut a little bit shorter to start to show the striated glutes so bob now the classic physique guys they their shorts are getting wow. smaller than the bikini ones i don't know what else to do <laughs> you know it, it's funny because yeah you know richie did start that back then because back then you wore trunks to cover up your ass not show it off i mean most people didn't have lines in their glutes but you talk about keeping somebody honest i mean uh rich bringing that level of conditioning and he was ripped you talk about you know, I know uh, um, Chad kind of coined the phrase grainy with Dorian, but Richie was kind of grainy way before Dorian ever came around and really just had that ultra thin skin, veiny, just beautiful, just hardcore bodybuilding. And that did keep Lee honest. If Lee just came in just a little bit off, Richie was right there. And, and Rich, I mean, I, you know, we've had many conversations about this, but the hallmark of Rich back then was his consistency. Every single show Rich showed up, He's an instant contender. He never came in off, always on the mark. And then it was just, a, a, you know, depending on what the lineup was, is whether he won, lost, or, or you know, or drew. So um, there was a whole different time. But, yeah, th these days everybody wants to, everybody's hiking up their trunks, you know, up up their butt crack. And then half the time they shouldn't be. I mean, they should be yeah. pulling it down or getting bigger trunks. But, um, yeah, you can all thank Rich for that. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got all the guys sticking their their posing trucks up their ass. Yeah. Look at you fighting with Bert, Bert Fox. Oh, there, I just saw that. Yeah. All these guys, hey, hey Stacy, all these guys had hair. Look at Gary Strider, <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, Bob Paris, Bob Paris, Samir Beno. They all had hair. Yeah. You got you got to you, you got to know that back then the bodybuilders were younger. You know, I'm in my early twenties. Yeah. A lot of bodybuilders, yeah. you know, now competing as top pros are in their you know mid to late 30s or into their 40s so is that stridum on the end i can't oh, yeah. uh yeah, yeah, yeah that's gary stridum are we, rich are we counting him with her or without her <laughs> <laughs> that's true he had it he had a yeah, two yeah. <laughs> i want to point out that those are all pro tans on stage there even robbie robinson yeah. last night we tanned him and that's uh we got robbie tan bob paris was tan richie of course is there samir is our athlete i mean Look at the color there. I mean, I know it's not as bright, but it's a golden bronze. You don't get that dark, that darker look. So to get back full, full circle, back to that question, yeah, I would like to see the athletes a lot lighter on stage as long as they don't get washed out. A lot Rich, what, what year is this, Rich? That's the, that's the Arnold Classic, 89. Yeah, 89. 89. Uh, you know, I just want to, just a side note, I don't want to get off on a tangent here, but, you know, the tan is, is one thing, and you're right, probably everybody there is using pro tan, but look at the physiques. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to say, it's yeah. so aesthetic. Amazing, huh? different. So, what do you girls think of that, Tarek? We've been you, you've been giving us showed us a bunch of us old men. We got these young ladies, all these hey, new uh, hey guys. I just want to announce uh, that if this girl decides to compete in bikini fitness yeah. or <laughs> wellness, you guys better retire. Okay, <laughs> Say, uh, all she got pro tan, we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, hey, uh, going back to what you said, Stacy. I want to emphasize something that when you diet for three months and you're going on stage, you can't make a mistake on your tanning. And a lot of times I, I'm just coming back from Thailand 
And people come up to me and they say, hey, what should I do with my tanning? And my first response is just go put some protein on. I don't even know if protein is there, but I just don't want them to Thank mess you. their presentation. Yeah. And one thing that I'm going to say about protein is I have never seen anybody be on stage with bed color Thank once you. they had protein on. It's, it's, it's the brand where you're not going to have any mistake. Going back to the bodybuilders, they're a lot, they're a lot better looking. Uh, in the, when that uh, Rich Kasperi was competing, those guys were a lot better looking than the guys, even from the 90s. I mean, look at the 90s. People talk about the 90s bodybuilders. Some of the ugliest bodybuilders were in the 90s. Chris Cormier. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> he, sh he, so, should have he should have retired, Derek. That's what he should have done. I mean, people talk about the 90s. Chris Cormier, ugly guy. I'm I'm interrupting your story for an emergency break. There it is. That that's, that's the deodorant. Okay. <laughs> Very important. We went from tanning to deodorant. I'm sorry about that, Derek. That's, that's, hey, that's for all you bodybuilders who stink out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't go backstage anymore. This, you know, you get to be my age, you just don't have much of a filter. It's all good though. No, no, it's important because yeah. you want to feel comfortable on stage. And it's, it's not only the color, it's the hair. You know, even the guys, they get the fade on the hair because they want to feel comfortable on stage. Bob, um, talk to me about the Arnold Classic. You were there. You saw Cassandra. You saw Ariel Kadar and Laura Lee Chapados. Are they the favorite to win the Olympia? Or you still have, you know, Francia Limatus. You still have Whitney Jones, Missy Truscott. Or... Uh, uh, the enemy of Laura Lee Chapato's Maureen Blanquisco as favorites. Well, listen, we, for many, many years now, it's been pretty much tradition that the winner of the Arnold automatically becomes the front runner to the Olympia. Now, and there are certain exceptions to the rule. Uh, like in this case, I've said Samson Dauda is a front runner, but you also got to give Derek Lunsford equal credit because he was second uh, in, in a runner up position at the Olympia. So I give them dual status as the number one contenders to try to take out Hottie Chupan. In the girls' cases, I mean, Ariel, you know, a two time winner now defends the title. Is, um, that is, that's the toughest category because there's what, four of you that are uh, Olympians that you're going against up there? You've got Missy, you've got um, uh, Oksana. If she's is healthy this year, hopefully she makes it back. You've got, uh, you know, Whitney. Um, you know, so you've got a whole bunch of, of former, you know, Olympians that you got to go up against. So Ariel's got her work cut out, but being the number one contender, you, you can't bet against her. I mean, uh, last year, if not for the flooring, which was a little unique and definitely did not help Ariel because she's got a lot of strength moves. That might've been a different situation. Uh, Laura Lee, absolutely the front runner. Uh, you, you got to give her that credit because she actually beat the incumbent champ. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this was a good strategy move by Maureen, but now the door is wide open. And Laura Lee just simply just – she didn't open the door. She barked, she blasted through it. So she just beat the champ. You, you got to put her in the in the spot of, of, of uh, competitor to beat at the Olympia. And Cassandra, I mean, you're in a real tough spot of um, – the wellness class is just so competitive. Um, and the fact you're able to beat anybody that's south of the border – is amazing, and that's just a testament to how good you were. Because I tell you what, it's tough to, to beat the Brazilians, uh, people, you know, girls from Colombia, Venezuela, right? We, we get them all, and it all seems to be again the south of that border. So, congratulations hey, to Cassandra, but absolutely a front runner, Bob. I'm gonna, I, I defended Cassandra against the Brazilians because they were very upset that Cassandra Gillis beat Angela Borges, and I said, That's right looked fantastic she had a great physique she's the toronto super show winner and she looked very very good at the arnold i would my feedback to cassandra would be you can continue to add muscular development on the glutes and the legs and what i said angela is a fantastic competitor she's the pittsburgh pro uh winner a few years back she's a great competitor and that may be the reason that angela borges did not win the show was possibly a lack of balance between the glutes and the legs. And uh, a lot of people got upset with me, and I can <laughs> understand that. A lot of the Brazilians are very emotional. They consider the category to be, you know, all created in Brazil. 
And when Angela took second to Isa Pereira at the Arnold, nobody was that upset. You know, nobody was that upset. When Angela yeah. took second to Franciele Matos, nobody was upset. So I have to believe that this is a little bit of a patriotic bias. <laughs> that, oh, you know, if somebody that's not Brazilian wins the show, then we're all going to believe that, you know, it wasn't deserving. It was very deserving. I stand by what happened. I think it was a great decision. I think Angela is a fantastic competitor. On that day, Cassandra was better. And I'll be in Brazil, okay? I'll be in Brazil. I arrive in Brazil in April. So I'll be there for all your Brazilians. You can stop sending comments to Cassandra, and you can all start sending comments to me, and I'll be in Brazil to see you guys, okay? So, um, and that's my two cents on it. Um, but, Bob, I believe Cassandra did something that, like you said, it's pretty incredible because the ca category started in Brazil, and most of the competitors are from Brazil, but that doesn't mean that we are not going to see champions for another from another country. Listen, uh, Cassandra did her homework. She came in. The judges uh, clearly thought she was the best. So listen, it was a close competition. But at the end of the day, you know, somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to lose. I don't care where you're from. And it does show that the judges are doing what they should be doing. They're not judging by where people are from or how many titles they've won or, or whatnot. My only advice is to, to Cassandra, uh, the normal ones, when somebody wins a prestigious show like the Arnold, don't change anything. Right. I would do exactly what you did. Listen, if you're good enough to win the Arnold, you're good enough to win the Olympia or at least contend. Now, Francielli is no pushover. All right? She's a two-time champ. you got to take her out. But yeah, you don't change your game, game plan for nobody. You bring in exactly what you brought there. And uh, then you just then it's just a straight up comparison, Richie. I want to go to you because when you competed, we had the magazines, right? So you competed. We had the magazines, and guys like Peter McGov, they would write their piece, and we would read their piece. Uh, there was a lot of writers. Nowadays, it's a different ball game. Uh, after prejudging, the internet is flooded with comments, and we have about 1.6 billion judges on the internet. Well, talk to me about, you know, the different generations. Is it better right now that everybody has an opinion? Or do you miss the days where the experts could command the narrative? I mean, like you said, it's a different era. Magazines dominated, you know, with, with expert judges giving their opinions and the writers who gave their opinions. And now you have every Tom, Dick, and Harry that's going to give their opinion on, on you know, whether it's Instagram or TikTok and what these, you know, these hardworking competitors, what they do and, and give their opinion on who's better, who's not better. I mean, I got bashed because, you know, I was, I was, I was all about conditioning, like you guys talked about, and I wasn't happy with the conditioning at the Olympia, which I saw a big difference at the Arnold, where I thought the guys were in much better condition at that show. And, and, you know, when I give my opinion, it's not because I want to disparage any athlete. I want to I want to see athletes oh, yeah. improve and be way better than I was. And it seemed to have happened. And a lot of the athletes came up to me like Nick Walker saying, you're going to see how I'm going to look. I'm going to be in much better condition. And it was cool to see, you know, Samson come up to me as well and say, watch what you see what I look like, you know, my condition. And so I said, wow, people listening to my opinion and what I said. But there's so many people out there, and you're asking who's better, and what is it better then or now? I mean, there's a lot of great information that you're going to get on social media, you know, with great experts. But then there's a lot of crap that you're going to get, you know, from social media. And you got to be able to just like, you know, distinguish which is, you know, good information, which is bad information, especially for these athletes if they're there listening to, you know, these people that are giving their opinion about their you know about their physiques ariel you you're a competitor you have people in the internet that are your fans chris cormier he's ride or die ariel kadar you know and then you have people that are missy truscott fan whitney jones fan do you get impacted by comments negative or positive or you just do your ariel kadar thing i definitely don't care about the comments that much um i just do my own thing that's really the only way you can do this. I mean, if you're going to take negative comments to heart, then that's definitely this in general, this is not the life to be living in this world because it's just inevitable. Yeah. What about you, Laura Lee? 
You know, you're on the top of, you know, uh, the bikini game. Uh, the bikini girls, they can get a little catty. There's comments here and there. Uh, does that impact you or you just keep going? I honestly, I would I would lie to you, Tarek, if it, I told you it never impacted me before. Of course it does. Like, I think we're all human. Um, but I have such an amazing community. Like, I have no time for anything negative. And I need to go back training and it, then I need to go get my food on. So, like, I really don't pay attention anymore. I think my mom is more on it than I am. So I'm just like, mom, listen, just like, you know, don't get affected by this. Don't get it personal. Like, you know, um, most of the time people, people don't know what they're talking about and also kind of gave up on like trying to being understood by people that are just really like, um, I call them, um, like, how do you call them? Like just warrior, like keyboard warrior type keyboard of thing. Keyboard warriors, yeah. Yeah, I have, no, I, I have the music community to like lay on to and I have so much to give to them. This is my focus. Like I'm not, um, but in the past, of course it, it does, you know, it's not, it doesn't go unnoticed, but I'm able to just kind of like put it to the side and not giving anything back yeah. energy wise. Well, Bob, you and I are, you know, as a judge, I always tell people, um, you know, as a judge, you, it's not like you have, you got to have thick skin. You just have to endure after every show, 99% of people be unhappy with what you have done because there's only one overall winner. There's only one champion and the nature of the business is that people are going to be unhappy, you know, and a lot of times as judges, you have to go face to face with the people that, you know, placed seventh or eighth or ninth, but Bob, you you know this very well that in the internet nowadays, if you give your opinion, you're highly criticized. Yeah, even right. though even though we are the ones that sometimes have to make the the choices or command the narrative for the sport. Well, first of all, people got to understand something that not every every even though everybody's entitled to an opinion, not everybody's an expert. That's the first thing. Number two, unless you're sitting at the judge's table, and I know we beat this one to death and I'll continue to do it as long as I got breath in my lungs. Yes, you have to be there. It's a different show. What you people are watching at home, on the pay-per-view, on your phone, on the computer, from the 50th row, the 100th row, the balcony, it's a different show than 15, 20 feet away and what the judges are looking at. You cannot see the detail. And every athlete here will nod in agreement, and Stacy as well. He said he's been in more shows than probably anybody. You can't see the detail on a screen, even on the big screen while you're there, like you can in person and up close. So, yes, you guys are seeing a slightly different show. The other thing you got to keep in mind is, as, as commentators, MCs, judges, whatnot, we're not emotionally involved here. We don't have favorites. We're not fans, even though we like certain people for, for various reasons. All right? we're, we're not, we don't look at it from a fan perspective. So we're not emotionally attached here. We don't know what they went through. Nobody cares about your story and your journey. Nobody cares what you had to jump through and jump over and, and overcome all these obstacles on your way to the stage. There's no bench press round. There's no scale on stage. And you don't get to submit a resume of what you had to go through. The judges don't care. All they're doing is looking at your physique and giving an assessment of who they think is better. That's it. Very well said. We're going to finish this live with Stacy Kaufman. Stacy, you've been in the business since 1987. I wasn't even born in 1987. <laughs> Not scary. Actually, no, I was I was I was born. My wife is here. I'm going to smack you if you say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but you've been in the business since 1987. You're one of the most successful businessmen in in bodybuilding. You have a very successful company, but most of all, Stacy you are a very beloved figure okay. in bodybuilding. Everybody loves you and your beautiful wife. I actually prefer your wife than you. Everybody That's does. Okay. Um, talk they to all the girls are, are smiling because of that. So it was fine. I want. I want to give you the <laughs> final. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I want to give you the final word, um, so you can finish our live. You're a very inspiring person, so I want to give you the final word. So first of all, I wanted to thank the girls for coming on. I wanted. I wanted our team to show uh, up because I felt everyone deserved some publicity. You girls have been great for us. And, you know, a lot of people know Ariel's already a pro now What 15 years, right, Ariel? You told me <laughs> so, Laura Lee, you know, so this is not, they're not, they, they look like they're 20, 
But you know, Ariel's a longtime pro. Richie had a very successful pro career. Cast, you and I just met from Toronto. I'm a big Canadian fan, so I wish you the best. And you look, our color's great on you. But I have to just tell you the Arnold story before we end because it's kind of cute. And it happened in 1987. Um, and I was actually at the table with Arnold and his wife at that time, Maria Shriver. And I was there. We were sitting after the show. They had those VIP things. And we're there. And I had the picture sitting next to him. And it was quite funny. We talked a little bit. And I said, so, Arnold, what, what did you do for tanning back there? Back in the days, he goes, I use wood stain. I go, <laughs> I said, come on. You did not use wood stain. That is not how you became an Australian oak. He goes, I use wood stain. I go, well, that's not good. You, Franco did too. And so this day... I, I tell people, and this is, I must, and I, I tell you, you know, he sat there and told me he was listening. I'm waiting to ask him that question. I was hoping to be able to ask him at the Arnold this year. We were the sponsor. We didn't get to see him. I saw him from afar. It was very nice. Um, but hoping next year I'll get a little bit closer to him um, as we become the, you know, the, for next year. But it's a great story. I love it because it's so old. And it, it's when I was just 21 years old. And fast forward to where I am today. And I just think it's a wonderful story. I want to share with everybody. Because <laughs> I stand. That's 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 incredible. I'm going to mention that when I see him. Well, Stacy, thank you so much. You're a phenomenal businessman. Everybody so in the industry loves you. Thank I want you. to thank also Rich Gasperi. Rich, when I joined a gym in 1984 and I saw your picture, um, I said, I'm going to be a bodybuilder. I couldn't be like you, so I decided to be a judge, but I'm still trying, okay? Yeah. Uh, and by the way, everybody listens to what you say. So when you say that guys are out of shape, everybody knows that you are saying it and you can say whatever you want with all the titles you have. Yeah. I want to thank Cassandra Gillis, the Arnold Classic Wellness Champion. Keep going, Canadian Super Blonde. You're on fire. Go to the Olympia and kick some butt. Ariel Kadar, this is your time. Go to the Olympia and kick some butt. I told Whitney Jones, Missy Truscott, that you are coming. And if you don't win, Chris Cormier will be dead the day after. Okay. <laughs> Laura Lee Chapados, congratulations on winning the Arnold again. You've won the Iron Games. You've won the Pittsburgh. You've won New York. You won shows in Siberia. You won shows everywhere. <laughs> you just need to win the Olympia this year. And then Bob Chicarillo, I want to thank you as my co-host. I want to say, Bob, one more time. We did the live. You never said that Big Rami should retire. You never said that. I, went, <laughs> I came back from Thailand, and I said, why are people talking about this? He did the live with me. He never said that. But anyways, Bob, just keep losing followers, and everything is going to be okay. <laughs> Anytime, my, brother. My name is Terry Kilgindi with I the Olympia it. and all the legends. We'll see you guys next Wednesday, next Tuesday, and next Thursday on Olympia TV. Thank you. Keep on going, buddy. Really well. Ladies and gentlemen.